Hello everyone and welcome to this flight gear tutorial video. In this what I hope is quite a short video we're going to be taking you through how to use the Julia photo scenery generator for flight gear which will allow you to grab in roughly real time uh, photo scenery for flight gear flight simulator and display it within the sim. Uh, it uses some fairly standard and perhaps not entirely open source methods to get uh, the, the orthographic scenery, photo scenery, whatever you wish to call it. Um, but you'll find a lot more information on the Flight Gear wiki, which is where we're going to be starting this. Um, wiki.flightgear.org and then just look for photo scenery generator get the Julia one there. And it takes through how to set it up properly um, which I think is important. I've been running it for a while it's really simple uh, but there are some parameters you're going to want to play with. I'm not going to cover all of them because it depends what you're doing or what you're going to use it for so it doesn't make sense at this point to to run through it. There are some prerequisites uh, only three of them. It's very easy to install everything. Um, and you'll, you'll grab them here. This method is for Windows users. You will find it just as readily uh, for other operating systems. I've also got this on a Linux setup. And it's just a case of getting um, the Julia programming language, which, if you follow the link, will take you to the website there Image Magic. Julia's loaded. Um, and grab it for whatever operating system you might be using. Install it. Job done. Image Magic. Same again. Um, Windows ARM um, versions, and you'll be able to grab Image Magic on whatever you might be using. Get those. You then need the photo scenery libraries, um, which are all written in the Julia programming language. Not a language I'm familiar with, but it makes sense and it kind of works. So the very quickest method, once you've got that, is literally opening Flight Gear Launcher and adding a property and then, then loading it. Uh, that's what we're going to do in a minute and it will hopefully work. I've not had it fail yet. There are other things here. There's more detailed information about the installations on the wiki. You don't, I, I, I hope, shouldn't need that. Um, there's also information about the different things you can pass it. This looks like it's quite scary and complicated. It really isn't. Uh, what you end up with probably quite quickly is, uh, like I've got here, uh, I just end up keeping um, some little notepad files with uh, arguments that I use uh, and some of these come by default anyway and also flight plans and things like that and they all get run nice and simple no one worries about it too much different parameters you use it, it will become second nature so what we're going to do we're going to automatically download as we fly no thinking it's just going to stick it in the flight gear and we'll see it the same way we get scenery via TerraSync. So once you've got it installed, Image Magic, Photo Scenery, uh, and the Julia programming, we're just going to go through and we're going to connect. We're going to ignore all of this. All of this we're going to ignore. We're going to use this method here, which is, again, even through this, nowhere near as complex as it needs to be. Uh, depending on your operating system, you need to find where you've downloaded it to. You get this folder here. Um, and I've just stuck it in a, in a bit of a folder. And then you need to, depending on what your operating system is, you need to make sure that it will allow you to execute photoscenery.jl. If you've just installed Julia, you may need to restart your PC. Um, but then make sure it'll allow you to do that. It might be in your advanced properties, depending on your operating system. But basically, we're just going to go in here, go to the folder, 
and we're going to go to photo scenery.jl and then it will run through a few little self tests just so it knows what's going on tell us that everything's working and it's going to tell us that it's now trying to find flight gear which means we go to our flight gear uh, and we check that we have got in here um, the, uh, the the telnet setup that's here as you can see in my additional settings I've got it so it shows me the console in flight gear um, can connect to this so we can get a, a map up uh, and also using different threads you can ignore all of these although I find console really useful stick telnet on um, we have got uh, TerraSync is enabled so it will grab the scenery for us not only is it gathering the scenery this time it's also going to gather the orthos and stick them uh, in our TerraSync folder um, don't need to worry about that I'm just showing you that for for setup so you can copy if you got what you want um, Telnet 5000 this is running and what we're going to do now we're going to click fly flight gear is going to start loading we can see flight gear is loading this is the console you may not have this if you haven't got console set up but what you should find I'm going to get confused because I'm using the thing now you can see that we've actually got these downloading if I okay so here we are now in flight gear we're going to have a little bit of a climb up. Um, we're in the UFO, so we don't need to do anything fancy. And you can see yeah, around Addis Ababa, there isn't really too much to shout about in terms of scenery. But hopefully, we're going to change that now with our loading scenery now one thing you need to do if you've never used it before you need to make sure you go into rendering options and then when we turn on our satellite photo scenery we're hoping that if we reload things we can get a little bit a bit of a visual improvement do a little bit of scan around see what it looked like before rather 1990s in appearance. Um, unfortunately, Flight Year doesn't have a great set of data to work with, which is why it's both one of the best and one of the worst to use for this example. Um, worst because it looks pretty bad. At the best, because hopefully we can make quite a difference. So if we go and reload the scenery now, fingers crossed. We should end up with a huge difference and look at that and that is from just running that out the difference that we can make there um, is stark okay we don't have the airport buildings in flight yet um, but hey they can be added I mean that's what this is all about but particularly when it comes to that grey, green, city landmass uh, and all of the other stuff around you can see over here in the distance we've got things still ready to pop in um, so that will come in as we as we grab it as we fly so we're gonna go over here and have a look at this airfield that you see where all the stuff here is now overlaying and even though this isn't a particularly great set of data to flight gear to work with what we know now um, is that we can we can drape it with some photos and make it look I think an awful lot better certainly uh, a lot more usable so if we go and let's see we've got this what I'm presuming is a desert over here 
And of course the benefit of this is even if you've got a set of orthos and you just want to go and fly uh, and do something a little bit off piste, what we can see here, it's probably going to be downloading things around. We may not be able to get a really quick result here, but you can see there's a very clear line there, isn't there? What is downloading? Um, and we've got all of that there, which is currently grabbing these, sticking it in the folder I've told it to. You can see each tile's coming down at about 6.35. It's downloading at a good speed. Doing something with it. If we go into debug, I'm maybe being optimistic here. Yeah, a little bit optimistic. But as we fly around, if we were to leave this for a few minutes, let's see, we're going at 230, 233 knots, something like that. Not an entirely unreasonable speed for this altitude. If you wanted to be flying along like this, I am pretty certain that by the time we get back to uh, where we need to be, um, by the time we give it a check again, we'll find that the scenery has already popped itself in. Which I think is, is pretty impressive, it's a good way of doing it. It will load on its own. Um, especially if you're loading scenery tiles as you go through. If you're loading scenery tiles um, as it loads them in, it'll give it a bit of a bit of a pop. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here. Just going to check I don't need to do reload materials. I can't remember the difference. No. Um, but you can see the difference. It loads them as you go, and I guarantee that if we were to load back into flight gear in five minutes' time, this would all be here. Um, if we were to leave it flying over this area five minutes, this would all be here, just like when we were. Let's see, it's, it's doing something in the background. It's using all the power, but just the difference it has made in this area over here. Obviously, thought I was heading in this direction because look, it's filled all of these in over here, which is why using the route planner is a better way of doing it. But if you just want to leave something flying over the scenery and uh, going where you might need to be going on a future flight or something you got planned, I mean, look at this. We've got all of this just from just from loading in. We'll get there. The stuff over here, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I hope this has been a useful video. And if you can get um, just started with photo scenery of flight gear, just by doing this, I think you'll you'll agree that from what we saw when we first loading into this area and to now, I think we've got a a really improved experience. And, of course, not paying a penny for it. Uh, free, open source flight simulation. That is what we're about. Thank you for watching.